Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Dervis, for being with us today. Uh, your visit is really very timely because tomorrow the G20 leaders are meeting in Pittsburgh and they will consider the global crisis, which is a subject that you have uh, spoken and written a lot about. So let me start uh, with a question on the global crisis. Do you think that it is the result of failures of economic governance or are there other governance failures as well? Well, I do believe that economic governance, the failure of economic governance, particularly governance of the financial sector, was the key reason for the crisis in the US and to some degree also in Europe. Uh, of course, financial sector was only part of the problem, but it was at the heart of the crisis. The huge current account deficit of the US also contributed. Monetary policy, maybe to some degree also, it may have been too lax, too, um, too low the interest rates when the asset prices rose. But the main, main reason for the crisis was the financial sector. Uh, but your question was also, well, is it just economic governance? And I do believe political governance and economic governance are not that easy to separate. Uh, the influence of the financial sector got very large in the United States and it had a political influence. It had, it had influence on political decisions. So there was interaction between economic and political governance. We cannot really separate the two and to that extent political governance was also part of the reason. Still on the question of the global crisis, do you think it will block attempts to make globalization more inclusive or is this an opportunity? It has made things more difficult because, of course, the rich countries are in a recession. Uh, resources have become scarcer. Resources that can be channeled to development, to the eradication of poverty, to global issues such as climate change are more difficult to mobilize. And in that sense, of course, the crisis has been a setback. It has been a setback for the Millennium Development Goals, for development in general, despite the fact that some of the developing and emerging market countries have been less affected because they were less part of the financial sector problems. On the other hand, as often is said, crisis also is an opportunity. It showed us that good policy is essential. It showed us that markets have to be complemented by government. They're wonderful mechanisms for private activity and incentives and human energy. But if they're not supervised and regulated, if good public policy does not accompany markets, we have problems. And that crisis, this crisis has demonstrated it. And in that sense, it may be helpful in the medium term to get the balance right between markets and public policy. Turning now to the IMF, are you optimistic that it will be given a global surveillance role? Well, that's a key topic for the Pittsburgh meetings particularly in relation to the global imbalances. I think it is very important. Uh, the IMF in the past has, of course, made mistakes. Uh, it certainly is not a magic solution to the world's problems. But it is a strong institution. It is now, I think, under good leadership. There are many skilled people there. And it now has, after the London summit, received more resources that it can deploy. So I do believe the international community should use the IMF for coordination purposes, for, stability, for building better stability, but also a stronger recovery, for more consultations. Well, that's the topic of my lecture today. I do believe, however, that it has to be a different IMF, a renewed IMF, not the IMF of 10, 20 years ago. Dr. Dervis, you have a long and distinguished career. You're also a published author. Where do you see your career path taking you next? Well, I've had lots of experiences at the World Bank, at the United Nations, teaching to some, sometimes in the past also, and I'm also teaching now uh, again. I've been in the Turkish government, I've been in the Turkish parliament. I have a passion for Europe and the building of the best possible Europe in, the best po in, a, in a good world, but uh, I feel very European as a, as a Turk. So I want to continue uh, to work on all these issues maybe in a somewhat more academic fashion, but still engaged on the global economy, on development, but also on the future of Europe.